Well, good up. morning, everyone. Uh, it's uh, good to be here this morning, and uh, today we're going to be uh, sharing a little bit about uh, the uh, over the report uh, that was published recently on remote learning in colleges in Scotland. And today we're going to spend a little time uh, considering the uh, approaches to ensuring quality. So I'm delighted that we have Beth Brownlee and Jenna Redpath from West Lothian College uh, here today to share some of their experiences from the across college perspective in Beth's instance and at course level uh, from Jenna's perspective as well. So they'll be uh, telling us a little bit about how they've met the challenges in uh, West Lothian College. And also just like to encourage you if you've got any questions uh, or any comments, pop them in the, the chat and we'll pick those up. And if we don't have time in the, in the, during the recorded session, we can pick up that conversation afterwards. So uh, without further ado, what I'd like to do is share some of the findings uh, that are in the report, but go into them in a little bit more detail around assuring the quality of remote learning. So I'm now going to uh, try and share my screen. Here we go. So uh, remote uh, learning in Scotland colleges approaching approaches to assuring the quality of remote learning. When we're looking at this and unpacking the, the feedback that we received from the, the various conversations that we had with, uh, with colleges, uh, staff, learners and so on, the, the kind of findings that we uh, came across fell into these sort of five categories. So things around establishing systems, actual arrangements that were being developed to evaluate the quality of provision uh, involving learners, it's a key part, but there was also themes around collaboration between teaching and support departments and also support networks to uh, support staff. So the, the first uh, area that was considered within that was about the uh, adapting uh, quality systems and processes with that move uh, online. And bear in mind, at this stage, we were talking about remote learning as opposed to, to blended learning. And what was clear from the, the findings that there are quite a lot of different uh, a range of starting points. Different establishments were in different positions, but within uh, individual establishments, teams could be in different positions and even individuals within those teams uh, could be in uh, different positions. So at ground zero, you know, at, at the point of going completely uh, remote, it was a case of being speedy, pragmatic, reactive uh, arrangements to offer remote uh, learning. And of course, at that point, th it was with learners with whom there were already relationships, but getting close to the end of term. So the, the initial challenges from a, a quality assurance and improvement point of view was simply finding time to take stock of, of what ha was going on and considerations around quality uh, and equity and, and the consistency of that. So that, that is the, the first challenge. The focus was on just getting things uh, done. So inevitably it did uh, result in a range of approaches, uh, which in itself is, is not a bad thing, but it was just understanding where people were at in that immediacy to get stuff uh, online. I think one thing that we, you know, we ignore at our peril is this was not just staff in colleges doing what they were having to do and get remote learning online. Staff at the very same point in time were moved to remote working from home and that in itself is a, is a challenge. So that was a kind of, those were the, the, the starting blocks on uh, day one, as it were. But what we found was that uh, most colleges uh, were developing approaches to, uh, to deal with remote learning uh, as it was at that point in time and uh, colleges were beginning to devise and implement uh, revised arrangements in relation to remote learning uh, teaching and services for learning because we do have to remember that it, it's easy to slip into uh, um, remote learning is about learning and teaching and yes that is a the substantive part but it's also the other services that support re uh, learning and learners as well. And in that vein, um, what was very interesting around the area of support services uh, was that uh, there were quite a few examples of teams that were pushed into having to do something remotely, but actually identifying that this will have um, 
this will be a string to our bow uh, going forward. So, for example, things to do with health and well-being uh, and counselling services. Um, people would initially be hesitant for that to be done uh, remotely uh, or it may not be appropriate, but actually finding that there is a place for it in the mix uh, of the, the offer for some learners at certain points uh, uh, in, in their learning. Uh, the other aspect was the because everyone was working remotely from home uh, was the move of quality assurance processes online. Now, many things would have been electronic anyway, but moving the whole processes uh, online was a feature. What we did find was there was a significant variation, you know, within and across colleges uh, in relation to, um, you know, what was happening in terms of quality assurance. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean a lot is good and not so much is bad, but it is just variation and, and different approaches. And, uh, you know, with that, we, we also um, were hearing that formal quality assurance enhancement activity was really having to be uh, stripped back to core priorities uh, and keeping a, an eye on key issues. So that was, um, uh, you know, something which featured within uh, our findings. But of course, when you strip back to core issues, it's actually known what those core things are. So it was important to know and identify and choose the right things in each uh, context and situation. And of course, in relation to evaluation of what's, you know, working, what needs to develop, there was also the importance of making links to uh, evaluation between evaluation and planning for staff support uh, and development. The um, uh, one of the things which inevitably uh, you know came through very strongly was uh, quality assuring assessment. It's such a big feature across all the conversations uh, in many of the different strands as well. Uh, notwithstanding the, the absolute challenges within that, what we were finding was it was refreshing uh, and reinvigorating conversations around the purpose of assessment and um, you know, people were being very solution focused and actually gaining confidence uh, in uh, looking at different ways to assess. There is no doubt that the, you know, and it's another conversation, but the, you know, the pressures placed on formal college QA processes, not just the process, but the staff supporting these, whether it be uh, curriculum staff or support teams, uh, was substantive uh, and dealing with award and body requirements and guidance. So. But even parking that for the, the moment, notwithstanding those challenges, people are seeing this as a real opportunity to take a, a fresh look at qualifications and associated assessment approaches. Of course, this was, uh, you know, from our findings uh, earlier on in the year, but of course that becomes even more into sharp relief as we have the, the findings of the OECD report. And I think that probably adds to the impetus of, of taking uh, this particular agenda forward. There is a lot of work in progress, uh, we find. Uh, and some of the challenges are around, you know, having the right things to evaluate uh, the effectiveness uh, of um, remote uh, or blended learning and teaching, you know, at both benchmarking tools, qualitative evidence, quantitative evidence, uh, and so on, and just starting to bottom out what are the best approaches to help uh, evaluation of that. Uh, clearly, you know, blended learning is a spectrum and, uh, you know, it's how do you evaluate across that spectrum, um, you know, all the different, uh, whether it's face-to-face, -face, virtual, synchronous, asynchronous uh, and so on. And not only is it a blend for maybe a particular course, level of students and so on, but a blend might flex over time uh, as we are still working through uh, COVID restrictions and so on. So uh, it's how do you evaluate in that, that balance and mix of things and uh, the ability to flex it according to different situations and different needs. One of the other challenges that uh, uh, colleagues are grappling with is differentiation within learning and meeting what are often very conflicting needs. And we, we all uh, probably heard of, you know, uh, for one program and one, one group of learners, 
you know, one learner might say, this is working really, really well for me. I, I love this approach. It just, uh, it gives me the flexibility. It, it, it just presses all the buttons for them. And another learner on the same course will say, this is awful. I find it really hard. It's not working for me. So, you know, there are challenges in how do you evaluate and um, de design and develop uh, approaches to delivery which meets the, the, the needs the, the, as well as possible uh, for groups of learners. And I think the, the, the biggest thing uh, within the evaluation of remote learning, but would still apply in a blended context, is uh, assessing active engagement and from that progress of learners. And now there's nothing unique uh, within the, the college sector for this. We've done work um, with schools and local authorities and exactly the same message was coming up. Do we have the right tools and approaches to support the uh, evaluation of uh, learner engagement and progress from that? Um, other aspects of the, the review was the involvement of learners uh, in evaluate activities. This is a very positive area and the, the level of engagement with learners has been very substantive and uh, to get a sense of how well things are working for them. And lots of examples of very speedy, quick changes as a result to, uh, of engaging with learners. And that engagement goes from at class level, individual classes, to program level and then working across college and includes the uh, engagement with student associations. There were examples of uh, students associations using Sparks resources to, to help the, the learners in evaluation and some examples where other frameworks had been developed as well. The big story there was that colleges are very positive about how well learner views uh, had contributed to inform improvement. And even anecdotally, there are exa examples of some learner groups engaging much better than they had before and feeling more involved, you know, for example, part-time learners. So uh, just quickly moving on, uh, collaboration. One of the things with remote learning is ironically, collaboration seems to get much closer as people are able to, to meet uh, much more frequently and uh, share practice, share challenges and so on, whether that be within curriculum teams, cross curriculum teams or with support services. And particularly in multi-campus uh, colleges with a sense of working much, able to work much more closely together than uh, prior to the pandemic. And uh, so there's lots of positive elements uh, around that. So in terms of support networks, uh, staff were uh, overwhelmingly valued the increased range of uh, opportunities uh, offered digitally within their colleges and also with the College Development Network. And particularly with uh, some of the, the sessions that are now offered by CDN on subjects as well as support uh, areas and they're really valued not just because they're done remotely but also when they're recorded as well it's providing flexibility to access uh, these opportunities. So uh, again lots of positives around the, the move to working remotely as far as digital offer for support uh, is concerned and there are quite innovative uh, approaches to share and practice in, in colleges uh, as well. So, uh, almost there, um, th there were a range of common issues that came out of the, the uh, remote learning uh, task that, that we did. Uh, so there were things like digital poverty, unreliable connectivity, issues around well-being, uh, the demands of developing learning, teaching and assessment uh, within remote learning. And uh, I haven't mentioned before, but you know, digital skills of staff and learners. We, we came across examples of really challenging what are almost like lazy assumptions about digital natives and uh, so that need to develop digital skills for both staff and learners to engage and participate effectively in remote learning. So all of these are in the mix and of course all of these have uh, to be taken into account when uh, assuring the quality of remote learning. So when I talked earlier about stripping back to the core things, it's then as you build it up, how are colleges making sure they pick up appropriately on all of these things. So we'll just stop sharing there and uh, come back. So uh, that was a, a very quick uh, whistlewind uh, tour of the some of the detail that sits within the, the uh, report on uh, remote learning that was published. Um, so what I'd like to do now is um, 
is pass over to uh, colleagues from West Lothian and uh, allow them to uh, share some of their experience of the challenges both at uh, across college level uh, and at uh, a course level as well. Okay, so Beth, I think I'd like to hand over to you to start with. Thank you, Scott. That's really appreciated. Um, and we <clears throat> we met briefly yesterday and we agreed we could talk for hours and hours about all these things because so much has happened. Um, so I'll try and keep it brief. So um, at West Lothian College, just to um, add even more spice to the crazy mix that happened last year, we, we had a management restructure. And so I was appointed into the role of head of quality student support and learning resources on the 1st of August last year. So um, that, that really gave fresh eyes on this whole quality process. And I really appreciate the support that Scott's given me through the year asking the, the good questions. But um, what, what we've tried to do is without annoying people too much and also being respectful of the pressure on staff and students, we've really tried, I've been trying to sort of question everything, partly because I don't always know how things work, but also um, to have these fresh eyes. So, um, so one of the first things that we did um, was forming this learning continuity support team so that we could try and ensure a, a good standard of quality of, of pedagogy and blended learning and uh, there was a, a group of us from across the college um, Alan Morton who was our TQFE PDA mentor was seconded into a digital lead role um, for the year and, um, and then a number of other staff um, were involved um, including people that were supporting students and so as, as a team we felt that we've um, actually progressed a really good model of um, supportive um development for staff but our goal was to let the staff develop themselves and support that from behind rather than them being done to um, and jenna was one of the many lecturers who really embraced that approach so so that was really interesting um and i think what i'll do is i'll just hand over to jenna now to talk a little bit about um, her side when she was working with the students and then Jenna if you can pass back to me I'll talk a little bit about how we worked in student association and then and finally a little bit about um, self-evaluation at the end as well so over to you Jenna. Thanks Beth. Yeah so it was really important for us as lecturers to give the students a voice and to feel this level of control over their learning journey especially when next year's looking quite similar to this current academic year as well. So there was a number of things that we'd done to have a mechanism in place to hear their voice. And one of them is we invited all accounting and business students to an online workshop and we called it the good, the bad and the ugly. And it was just to hear what do they want to continue and keep going? Because there was loads of things that they really took from this year. They were 100% online for the last nine months. They were never in college. So it was a really different journey for them. And we done a live survey with them. And then we went through the live data and there were 70 in attendance. So it was a great um, session where we, they really felt the control telling us what worked and what they wanted to change going forward in this blended environment. So that was really good. But also as a, a team of lecturers in our business and accounting area, we, we made sure that each week we tracked how their journey was going as well. So we, because we were on Microsoft Teams, we would use um, little polls every week. So if we tried breakout rooms or a quiz or a game or an activity that was new, we would very quickly say, like, did that work for you? Do you want to do it again? Did you enjoy that? And we would get this very quickly so that we could adapt each week. That was really important for us as well. And of course, the usual, we would use Microsoft Forms for end of unit evaluation, end of block evaluation. Um, but yeah, we're just really trying to tap in as much as possible on their journey with it being so new, Faith, is what I would say. And just having that open dialogue constantly throughout the year and not just an end of the year thing where you're saying, oh, what did you think happened over the last nine months? This was a continual checkpoint with students because that was really important. Um, so yeah, Beth, I don't know if you want me to go through any examples of the workshop, because um, there was 17 questions that we asked and with some surprising results. 
Um, so maybe as lecturers, we would have in our mind all the love um, breakout rooms, for example, will actually they said that they wanted to try something different. So we can make assumptions maybe that for the social element that would have really worked, but um, based on the data that we generated there, we're going to try something different. Um, so yeah, it, it flagged up a lot of things where Scott talked about lazy assumptions. We were really surprised the fact that 80% said that they felt being 100% was a benefit to them as a student. So that again was another surprise for us and it was a good surprise um, that they felt that they benefited this year, or 80% of them anyway. So, just mindful of time, so I'll just take back the reins just for uh, a couple of minutes. And um, just to finish off talking, um, Scott also mentioned about the Student Association. Um, so we, we had uh, actually an award-winning Sparkle process that was our twice, uh, twice yearly um, student association evaluation of learning and teaching um, but we actually pivoted that to uh, make it much more focused on the students well-being how they how they were feeling that was going how they were feeling themselves and uh, also how was the digital learning going so and a, another thing that we did was that we really backed off we we did use the model from sparks and from education scotland but we didn't use the words because we had a lot of strong messages that students didn't understand that language so we were able to um, adapt the language to make it really understandable for everybody and then the other big change with our student association evaluation this year is that we were able to send that to every student in the college um, whereas previously we'd had a class rep system which relied on class reps taking that survey into the classroom yeah it was done in a digital way but um, it let us reach particularly our part-time learners that we might have been a little bit more hit and miss on. So we actually greatly increased the number of responses from all classes, uh, which gave us a better or more valid um, uh, voice from. Um, the, the learning continuity support team also helped with, uh, Jenna, Jenna and the team in business and accounting are very good with Microsoft Office, but um, Alan helped um, other uh, colleagues across the college to be able to use Microsoft Forms and not Poly because that seemed to stop working halfway through the year but um, we there's other things that are coming in so um, and then just last but not least the other thing that we've done um, that I want to talk about is just um, again um, flexing the self-evaluation process so two things there one is that we're going to digitize it and we're using a product called Insight Q from a, a company called Mesma. Now, previously, SDS were using that for their modern apprentice self evaluation. And um, I'd, I'd been on the launch of that last year with Diane Mitchell, our head of uh, workforce development. So I was quite impressed with the interactivity and the just a, a, a bit more engaging because they, they use things like RAG, uh, an interactive RAG system. So we've implemented that again this year, but like the Student Association, we've not, I apologise to Scott yesterday, we've not used Education Scotland wording, but we've worded it in a way that made it easy for them to engage with at a time of year when they're really tired or exhausted, but we still want to ensure that we capture all the, uh, the good stuff um, that they did and things that we need to learn from. Um, like Jenna said, a lot of students really, really appreciate the online stuff because it's easier. They don't have to rush to get a bus. Um, there, there are equally students who've really struggled with it and it's not been great. So we're, we're also starting to implement some of that learning into preparing the students for next year. So not all of those things are, are, remote, are particular to us, um, but those are some of the things that we did at West Lothian College this year just to assure the quality of the learning experience. So uh, thanks for the opportunity to tell you about that. Uh, thanks, Beth. Uh, I wonder if you could uh, uh, just say a little more perhaps around the, the, the issue which is across sectors is about engagement you know you know evaluating the quality of learner engagement uh, as they go through their program uh, and also progress the, their progress because that has been a challenge and we, we hear lots of comments about cameras off cameras on if it's 
synchronous face to face uh, but, but even in other aspects of it that is does seem to be a challenge in having appropriate range of things in place so what sort of challenges how have you grappled with that challenge uh, both from a college perspective and, and Jenna uh, at a subject level yeah, well last week <laughs> I was going to say because yeah that is so true in all the classes that we've had in our business and accounting groups you would get a couple with a camera on maybe some people wouldn't even be comfortable in chats especially in the first few months so what we agreed to do as a team is because we were using Microsoft Teams, you can set an assignment up for little mini formative tasks on a weekly basis. So, yep, that takes quite a, a lot of time to maybe feedback and do individual marking, but it's a massive way for us to monitor engagement. Were they actually on the call and did they manage to complete the task? So that's telling us as lecturers that they're managing to keep on track. Um, so because due to shyness, for example, we maybe don't have the camera on. So for us having this weekly formative little piece of homework for them, it was good for us to touch base with them at individual level, which really worked for our centre. Beth, from a, a cross-college perspective? So um, just an, an example of that is that we've just done our final um, so, um, evaluation quiz um, out to all students. And, and the last question of that is we asked them, what advice would you give to students in uh, the next academic year? And actually a lot of it is about, it's the same advice you would give to a student if you were completely on campus, but for online is be, be organized. That was definitely a big piece of advice. And, um, and turn up five minutes early. Don't just wake up from your bed and then turn your camera on. Um, the, the cameras off, cameras on, that's going to be an ongoing thing. And that's the latest core skill is the uh, employers are really clear about that, that they want people who can come on a video call and have their camera on. So uh, we need to address that next year. I think we've not quite cracked it. And I'm just smiling that everybody in this call has got their camera off apart from the speakers <laughs> and Andrew. Um, so, um, but yes, yeah, so, um, yeah, we're, we're, uh, there's, there's been some good means in place, like Jenna says, to track the progress. Um, Alan Morton had, had set up another session about using an Excel spreadsheet to track progress as well and to promote that discussion across a course team, which is something that um, has actually been in some ways easier. And there's definitely been a more of a team approach to all of this. The conversations that have been had are um, very rich and something we'll definitely be carrying on into the following years mm -hmm. uh, about how, how best to help the students to be successful and achieve what they want to achieve. That's uh, thanks. Sorry, Scott, that spreadsheet's been amazing. We called it a matrix for completion for one of the groups. And every time they completed a task or a unit, their percentage went up. So that really motivated them as well to want to continue and progress. It was a real driver for them filling that wee spreadsheet out. It was great. Okay. That's replicating some of the features that you might have in Moodle, but which are not yet available in Teams. Mm -hmm. uh, so because there was quite a variety between students who are staff mm -hmm. and students who you wanted to use Teams and who wanted to use Moodle. Mm -hmm. so. So I think fi finally one question, and, and uh, apologise for, for for not having prepped you for this question, uh, Beth or, or for Jen. But it just occurred to me, you know, things that you know, this, the theme is about assuring the quality of remote learning. Now there are some things about quality which is absolute, uh, you know, uh, but some things are percep about perceptions and so on. And I know for this current uh, academic year that there is quite a bit of anecdote that said, you know, what happened was not did not meet expectations because it just because of circumstances so is there anything that you have done uh, to kind of help the under, learners understand what learning may look like and how it might vary through the course of this coming year yeah well what we're, we're running a lot of sessions over the summer for students who um, again we surveyed all learners coming to us in August and we asked them uh, what their, their digital skills were like and also we, we we looked at if they had a device that they can use so for those that were furthest away from that because um, we didn't want to replicate what we had this year that a lot of students said they were learning two courses we're doing an IT course and their vocational subject so we're, we're putting on we're using uh, skills boost uh, funding to um, support 
and uh, digital skills development and so and inviting in some cases inviting them into the college so they can build up their confidence face to face before till they get the basics and then we'll move them on to becoming confident in all the IT um the main IT skills that they need to be a successful learner online so so that will help them and it'll also help the staff who also had to help with a lot of questions on how how do I do IT stuff when uh, that took away from the time they had to to support them with their vocational subject thank you Beth well, well, thank you both for for your contributions uh, this morning. We, we will have a chance for further discussion um, at the end of the, this formal session. But uh, just thank you for your input. And there are some comments which we'll pick up in, on in a moment. But uh, thanks again. And uh, uh, thank you all for your, your contributions. Thank you.